Good morning, good evening, and good day. Today, we're continuing our Best of Steel Division 2 series with the Axis Assault Infantry. If you enjoy this content, please hit that like button and subscribe. It's free to you, and it really helps the channel out a lot. Let's dive right in. So here we are with six of the strongest assault slash engineer infantry in the game. Let's just rename them as CQC Close Quarters Combat Infantry that the Axis have. There are others, uh, but I tried to find the ones that really pack the most punch. Uh, specifically talking about there's a lot of different squads of like MP44 infantry scattered throughout the different divisions of the Axis. I left all of them out because truly at really close range at actual 100 meter cqc combat range they're not very good they don't perform very well under those conditions so i really am not counting them as true cqc infantry even though they they can definitely kind of double as that that is not their actual best range and primary spot to fight which is why they're left off of this list so looking here, we have the Begleit Pioneer, the Fulschmiger Pioneer, the Brandenburger, the Gebirgjäger Pioneer, the Pioneer Assault, and the Pioneeri, coming from all different factions and such. Let's start with our, like, OG original superpowered Pioneer here, the Begleit Pioneer. This is only found in about two or three different uh, divisions. There's also the Hermann Goring version of this, which is exactly the same. Um, so this Pioneer here, we can actually zoom in a little bit. There we go. There we are. So we have nine MP44s, three G43s, one MG42, and the good old grenade at a 13-man strength. These squads used to be the pinnacle of destruction. They used to basically melt everything. But unfortunately, with the nerfs to the MP44, this this squad has fallen in deadliness really over time i would almost can say that it might be time to consider dropping this down to 30 because when you really think about it this squad is not way more effective than the one other ones we're going to go over here so you i do start to question how much this one should still call how this one should still cost 35 points and that's not to say that book light pioneer isn't still super deadly don't get me wrong it still pumps out a lot of damage but it definitely doesn't sit at the pinnacle of the axis close range units like it used to sit at that that pinnacle there continuing on we have the fulshmeager pioneer at 30 points it has two two fg 42s nine k98s one mg34 and the grenade it also has the raider trait with a strength of 12 uh this one also got a recent nerf pretty significant all their uh g43s were replaced with k98s so that's a that's a pretty big knock to be honest with you uh, we can see here this has half the power with one third the number so you know it lost probably about 0.3 you know well really i guess what it lost 0.45 damage so you know its rifles used to be much stronger and this does significantly weaken it at close range so the actual like shooting power of this division at close range has been lowered quite significantly and now it's still very deadly with the double fg42 which can fire at close range but truthfully these these pioneers are almost more like long range infantry than true pioneers they have the grenade and that's the only thing that actually makes them really cqc otherwise this is a rifle squad if we're being totally honest about it, this is a rifle squad with a grenade so that's that's one that's one knock on the fs pioneer so, scrolling down here, we get to the Brandenburger, found in Group Toulon. Very strong uh, squad. It can only be brought in with two veterancy, something to be aware of. So, if we look here, and these are all unveteran, by the way. We have four MP40s, six G43 semi-automatic rifles, two MG42s, and the grenade, along with the Raider trait. I do want to point out one thing with the Raider trait that's often not mentioned. So, the first thing we think of, well, Raider means that they work better behind the lines, you know, when they get cut off. And that is true. But the I would say the actual strength of the Raider trait is their increased stealth. So, the anyone with the Raider trait actually has a higher stealth rating automatically built in to their unit. And you can see very good there for their stealth versus good for their stealth over here. So this unit is very, very deadly. If you have never played against Group Toulon, you definitely dread seeing these guys on the field. They are extremely deadly at both close range and long range. The double MG42 means that they can absolutely hold their own against any normal line infantry and win quite handily but because they have four submachine guns they still function quite effectively at very close range and the semi-automatic rifles are a significant upgrade over just 
you know, bolt action rifles. So these guys have plenty of close range capability, even though I would still say these are not like full on 100% dedicated to crushing close range opponents, but they are quite deadly. And these are very flexible, both long range and very effective at CQC with their loadout here. Continuing on, we have the Gabigs Jaeger Pioneer out of the new Italian DLC. These guys are very fantastic. They have six MP40s, three G43s, an MG42, and this new Jerry Can Bomb, which is like a mega Molotov. It, it's significantly better than Molotov. It actually kills a lot of units, and I don't, I don't know if it instantly suppresses, but I, I want to say it does, but I might be exaggerating that. I'm not 100% sure, actually. Let me know in the comments. Very strong. They have a Raider trait as well, 10-man squad. This is a CQC division, uh, excuse me, squad. Yes, they do have an MG42 and they got some rifles, but that's not enough to really hold up against an actual rifle squad that's firing at them. And the six MP40s are obviously very effective at close range, along with G43s. So you have a very solid close range complement. And then, of course, you get three, not just two, three of these jerry cam bonds. Usually Molotovs only come with two these days. So this is this is a significant theory. It's very dangerous. These guys are very deadly. They're also only 25 points. Very spammable, especially in that division. So very strong unit there. Then from my favorite faction, the Romanians, we have the Pioneer Assault, which show up in two of their divisions. It is a 10-man squad with eight of their Orita M1941s and two flamethrowers along with some smoke. These guys are flamers, and like they says, smoke layers with 10 man. So this is a fully dedicated CQC unit. So there's nothing long range about it. It can't reach out. It has no MGs in any way. But double flamethrowers are extremely deadly in this game. You will generally dominate any CQC combat with almost any other CQC unit with this unit right here. Because other units with grenades really can never throw them off because you have two flamethrowers going so they constantly have to move remember you have to stand still to throw the grenade so as long as the flamethrowers continue to fire they never get a chance to fire and then you have eight submachine guns just basically constantly melting the enemy's troops while they're trying to move around dodging the flames so these are very very potent cqc units and finally we have another new unit out of the italian dlc the pioneeri for the Italians here. And this Pioneer Squad is quite interesting. It has four Berettas, which are, I would say, the best submachine gun in the game. Per, uh, uh, right up there next to the Thompson. They're right next to each other. Has six bolt-action rifles. That's that's an unfortunate, like, weakness, really. That they, they are not that effective. But then we have a flamethrower. Okay, that's cool. But then we also have a grenade, which is really cool. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I haven't really gotten to use this, this squad very much. But... I have to imagine the combination of a grenade and a flamethrower is pretty darn sick. The only problem I can see is that every time the flamethrower fires, if the enemy troops go backwards, they could fall out of the grenade range and cause the grenade like throw time to reset, which could be really frustrating. So that could be a weakness. They also do have Raider. Uh, very, very strong squad here that we see. So these are some of the strongest assault slash engineer units that the Axes have. Overall, if you haven't seen my axes versus allies comparison the truth is the axes are generally lacking in cqc infantry compared to the allies when you think of the soviets they just come with aftos and tankos and saperis and all those kind of things for the axes really all they get most of the time are the five-man Sturm pioneer squads which i don't personally like at all because they're 25 points for a five-man squad that dies pretty quickly and also pioneers which are average they're really rifle infantry with with a grenade i mean if we're being honest that's what they are they're a rifle squad with a grenade uh which doesn't make them like really powerful cqc infantry they oftentimes i find most of them are dead by the time you know cqc combat is over even though the other group is dead you've lost most of your troops so you know pioneers while they're solid are definitely not like superior cqc infantry these guys on the other hand are generally pretty dedicated i mentioned the weakness of the fulsham jaeger pioneer up here being probably a little bit more of a long range an actual rifle squad again with a grenade <clears throat> and the Baglite can fall into that a little bit too because they have mp44s instead of you know actual submachine guns here if we look really quick math wise we see eight submachine guns doing 3.2 damage and we see nine mp44s only doing 3.15 damage so you can see that difference in damage output for those submachine guns when you get up close and personal these submachine guns really do start to dominate you also see a much higher suppression rate 55 versus 42 so these guys will suppress them much more quickly that's not even counting the suppression from the flamethrower which is really really high which one is the strongest here um in terms of actual CQC firepower, like 
you know, you're up close and personal. I give it very easily to the Pioneer Assault. If you put these all up one v one versus each other, I believe the Pioneer Assault will come up on top. On the flip side, in terms of like full on flexibility and deadliness at any range, it's definitely got to go to either the Brandenburger Buglite or the Fulshermaker Pioneer. Probably, uh, this it's a tough, it's a toss up between the Brandenburgers and the Fulshermaker Pioneers. Why? Because the Brandenburgers have double machine gun and six semi-automatic rifles versus the one machine versus the two fgs really and the nine rifles along with that machine gun so it could definitely be a toss-up between either of these two squads the problem with the Bugalites is if they're out of 300 meter range then this squad is not strong so that's why i don't give it to the Bugalites. these guys really don't have much in the way of long-range firepower and these guys of course have basically none so that's the really the uh throw around here for the axis commando squads or axis uh, assault squads you definitely will find in most divisions that the axis are a little bit lacking in their close range firepower and again there are always exceptions there's a there's a few exceptions where they definitely buck the trend and they're like all in close range firepower but for the most part you're definitely going to find you have a little bit more success at long range and you have to be careful with these guys because they're very valuable and actually being able to take the forest from their allied counterparts if you enjoyed this content please hit that like button and subscribe for more steel division 2 content have a fantastic day